Welcome to the bullpen. On the bullpen today, I have Brandon Tatum, former police officer and author of Beaten Black and Blue, Being a Black Cop in America Under Siege. So uh, long extensive career, make sure you check out his bio when you get an opportunity. Brandon, thank you for being on Indisputable, how are you? I'm doing well, how you doing? I'm doing quite well, uh, we only have a few minutes man, so I'm gonna get right into it if that's okay with you. Let's do it. I noticed a theme on some of your social media posts. And basically, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't wanna presume anything. But basically, you call out BLM or Black Lives Matter because they seem to have a singular focus and they don't focus on some of these other detriments within the black community. Am I correct on that? Uh, yeah, to a certain extent, I think they do have a singular focus, but I feel like even their, even their singular focus is not productive and it's not really benefiting the black community. And, and I think that a lot of the people who are leading the Black Lives Matter organization is doing it for profit and not really for the, the benefit of black people that they claim that they're doing it for. All right, let me read something that um, you tweeted. Uh, black 10 year old shot by a black man and BLM doesn't care at all. Now that's a tragedy, man. And And I'm I, I hate when I hear stories like that and it, it touches me because not only am I from the community, I'm a human being. Um, but let me, let me put something on your radar. Black Lives Matter, they are singular in focus by design, by design, not unintentionally, but intentionally. Let me give you another example. The United Negro College Fund, they only fund Negroes, they only fund black people. It's like saying, well, they don't care about brown people or they don't care about poor white people. Well, it's not that they don't care about them as an organization. They have a singular focus by design. And Black Lives Matter as an organization, their singular focus is to put a razor sharp emphasis on the reality of unarmed black individuals who are being killed or accosted or violated constitutionally by members of law enforcement. That has been their mantra, that has been their design from day one. Do you have a problem with the fact that they are singular in focus? Or do you have a problem with something else in relationship to Black Lives Matter? Well, Black Lives Matter, I don't believe that they're singular focus in its totality. I mean, when you look at the mission statement that Black Lives Matter have on their on their website, and they've previously taken off the, the fact that they want to um, get rid of the nuclear family, it's a Marxist organization. So not only are they trying to address things in the black community, but they're also addressing things in the political arena. And the funny thing is, is that when you're talking about law enforcement and you're talking about police injustice, and you look at the money that was raised by Black Lives Matter, they haven't given any of that money or supported any of these people who have died in these claims of criminal justice reform. When you talk about George Floyd, you talk about Michael Brown, Breonna Taylor, nobody has gotten money from Black Lives Matter or really a financial support. Well, although some they're people raising have. money on their debts. Yeah, well, some people have, but I agree with you. There are some families that have come out publicly and said they did not receive anything. But it seems as if your beef is with the organization rather than the movement then because the movement is the movement to give an emphasis to grant an emphasis on the fact that black lives do in fact matter. Do you subscribe to the social movement of black lives matter? Yeah, I subscribe to justice for anybody that's treated unjust. Um, in this case, specifically black people that are treated unjust, I support that a thousand percent. You know, I think that if a police officer kill a black man for no reason or anybody, but let's talk specifically of black people, I think that police officer should go to prison for life. Mm -hmm. And then I would even go as far as if a police officer were to intentionally kill somebody unjustifiably, they should get the death penalty because police are held to a high standard. The problem with Black Lives Matter is that they, they don't have a, a genuine focus on black lives. If they want to be centrally focused or focused on one thing, then they should name themselves after that one thing and not say they care about black lives because what affects black lives the most is single parent, you know, being in single parent homes, black on black violence. Some people don't like when I say that, but it's true. Well, you let's know, talk more black about people that. die. More black people die at the hands of other black people than, than they were ever at the hands of law enforcement officers unjustified. Right, so let's so, talk about that. I, okay. I definitely understand your sentiment, right? Um, so let's talk about uh, murders, right? Uh, less than 1% of the population will ever engage in a murder. It, it is, when you look at it statistically in the context of the population, it is a very low uh, numeric crime, but it is, it is a high impact crime because murder 
impacts so many people and it is a harsh reality in the society. And that's why we pay a lot of attention to it. But let's go back to a notion that you brought up about their focus, right? If you go to cities, for example, after the George Floyd murder, you do agree that was a murder? Oh Yeah, 100%. Okay, all right, so we're on the same page with that, good. So after the George Floyd murder, it was actually Black Lives Matter who came in quickly and organized um, set up events, rallies. Uh, they called in some of the national uh, individuals to bring more attention to that uh, murder. And they are the ones who work with local uh, uh, officials in order to get the laws changed in that jurisdiction. But they've also done the same in the city of Atlanta. They've done the same in Miami. They've done the same in LA. They've done the same in New York. Now here's what the organization tends not to do because of the politics that are involved. Politicians, they don't like to come out of these meetings saying, we made these changes because of the organization. We made these changes because of BLM. They don't like to say that. Even Democrats and progressives and liberals, whatever they want to call themselves, many of them will not come out and say that. Republicans definitely won't say that. So Black Lives Matter decided to take a, a stand and say, we're not as concerned about the credit. I know what they did in Atlanta, cause I live in Atlanta. I know what they did after the George Floyd murder in Minneapolis because I'm friends with Benjamin Crump. So I know what they did, brother. So if you're going to criticize them, also be fair about the fact that they have been able to move the needle for some okay. black people and black policies in, in the United States. Okay, well, I, I, I disagree and, and here's why. Um, when you think about, just say that if uh, the Ku Klux Klan decided to, to go and use political leverage by burning down an entire city to get a law passed, I don't. that's domestic terrorism. It, it, the same thing that happens with Black Lives Matter, they go to a city not through a reasonable means of talking to public officials. They go into a city, burn down the city, burn down black businesses. People are Wait dying in these riots. Wait and then minute. they're forcing the hand of people Brother, to make decisions politically. Let to me, me ask that's you this domestic question. terrorism. Now, let, let me finish, yeah. let me finish. Oh, hold, hold because on, I, I don't, have, to, I have, I don't to have a limited time. Okay, you, I have let, to explain the reason why I say this because okay, but and then when you look at the, the policies, question. you say the policies that are put in place, how have they actually benefited black people? I None of this you. stuff about George Floyd will, will prevent black you people from me getting a question, killed. Bro. Okay, so I get to the question, but let me offer a rebuttal to what you just said um, about them burning down cities. How many members of the Black Lives Matter organization have been arrested for terrorism or vandalism or violence? How many? How many should or how many have? How many have been arrested, sir? You are a former police officer, you deal in data and statistics. If you're telling me that they've been engaged in acts of terrorism across the country, but none of them have been arrested, that means that your boys in blue have not been doing their jobs. That's what that means. But well, it's my question is the same. How well, many have the, been arrested? How many it's have the, been arrested, brother? It's federal prosecutors who are the no, ones- No, sir, these are city crimes. Them. These aren't even federal crimes. Federal government can't arrest you for vandalizing a, a building. Domestic terrorism, when you commit terror, <laughs> you ask me terrorism. So, so brother, you, 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 you don't have one person who's a member of Black Lives Matter who has been arrested, charged, and or convicted for vandalism, violence, or murder. No, no, That's no, yes, you, you have. You have, had, you have had many members who? of the Black Lives Matter movement or, or people who support the Black Lives Matter movement. See, whether you, uh, say, there that you, there, go. Whether there you, you go. say that they're a part of the, the, you go. the payroll or not. He, Here's These what you're are doing. people who are, are acting on behalf of Black Lives Matter as an organization. Here's what you're people doing. People who are getting laws changed, right? The ones Here, who are burning things doing, and protesting. You gotta be right? careful, man. Listen, man, we're black folks, man. Come on, brother. Here's the danger in what you, you, you're you, doing. Okay. Just, just uh, listen talk. to me. Listen to me. Here's the danger of what you're doing. You don't like to be generalized. I don't like to be generalized because with generalization comes marginalization. You can't connect the actions of someone who is vandalizing beside a protester as being part of the spirit of the protest. As a matter of fact, out of 7,300 plus events that were analyzed in a massive research study done by Harvard, 97% had no claim of violence whatsoever, 97%. Um, out of that, I think it was 1.9% of protesters that were attacked and 1% of police officers claimed they were attacked. So when you look at the data, brother, I gotta go back to the data. You had more Black Lives Matter protesters attacked 
than you had even police officers engaged in conflict. So I don't understand why you would try to connect or associate what may happen in a silo to the organization Black Lives Matter because you don't want anybody generalizing you like that brother and blaming me, you as a black man for what another black man does across the street in your neighborhood. Let me let me explain. You have made the 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 suggestion that the efforts of Black Lives Matter have changed legislation. They have. Which you would agree that because of the the protest in the in the you know the violence that have occurred. No, sir. Have pushed the needle. I mean, well, let me say it for you. I would not agree with that. This is not on your behalf, but the violence that have pushed the needle. Mm-hmm. When when cities make differences or make changes because they're afraid of the violence that's that what is you going think to it pursue. Is? Well, that's because, not what because the politicians you're not, are because saying. Think about this before Black well, wait Lives a minute. Matter. The politicians disagree with you. What politics? They're not changing anything until violence happened. Mm, when no, sir. That, that's not true. The that is not in true. Minneapolis, the chokehold in Minneapolis have persisted for I don't know how many years. So how much it's, violence? How much violence happened in Ithaca, New York, before they changed the law? None. Not a wait, bit wait, of it. We're oh. talking. You said George Floyd. So I'm well, talking about George Floyd. Yeah, but talking about George Floyd. Wait Taylor. a minute, brother. Listen to yourself. You realize that after the George Floyd murder was televised. You had governments all across the country engage in putting more money into community policing without a without a semblance of violence happening in their community. It was because not only of the outrage, but it was because of the citizens who were outraged. And, and the citizens included not only black people, but brown people and white people. Remember all the protests happening in majority white communities? Remember the protests that were happening overseas in support of Black Lives Matter? Violence. That's called pressure. That's the way it's supposed to happen. It wasn't because some black person threatened to harm, hurt, or injure somebody. Come on, man. Get well, the listen, 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 that, brother. This is this is my perspective. You have a perspective, I have a perspective. When I see violence in these cities, I see people acting. I see I see politicians being afraid. And I see politicians making decisions because they don't want their city to burn. You know, I think that there was a lot of conflict and controversy in George Floyd's case with them doing a lot of things that can have, you know, show and win on an appeal. They did a lot of things that were unconscious, you know, that were un, unreasonable to do, which like could what? cause them to drop the entire case and for Chauvin to get off on appeal. The like reason what? they did it because of the fear of violence well, brother, and this destruction is a in question. their cities. What did they do that will cause Chauvin to get off on appeal? Name well, let's let's start with this. They paid the family out millions of dollars before they finished picking a the jury. They didn't sequester the jury. Wait a minute, that has nothing to do with an appeal uh, an appellate it's, process. Well, okay. Let me give you another example, which yeah, the because judge that example doesn't to. fly. Let me, brother, let me give you another example. Again. Let me give you another example, which the judge lamented to when they were in the court hearing, when Maxine Waters came out <laughs> on a protest at a protest and said, if oh. they don't come up with a particular outcome, that okay. there's going to be more violence and more outrage. The judge in the case said that right. you have so action on appeal. That, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. So did you the judge said, not say that? You said, oh, absolutely, she did. I mentioned that did something the judge say that? needs to happen. And she told did the, no, brother. Did she, the judge listen, say brother, that? Brother, listen. The judge absolutely said what the judge said about the comments of Congresswoman Maxine Waters being taken taken completely out of context. But let me Ta- go. No, to no she wasn't taken out of context. Hold on, brother. On, let, man. let me come on, man. Let me just <laughs> let me do my thing here, and you do yours. All right? Okay. Let's go back to the original statement that you made, because I don't want to miss that. You said that there are things that they did unreasonable that would cause Chauvin to appeal. You named two things completely unrelated. One, the fact that the family was paid out, and by the way, it was the largest payout settlement in the history of America, <laughs> black or white, right? That has nothing to do with the trial whatsoever. So yes, and it does. on that one. Now, let's go to Congresswoman Maxine Waters and her statement. She made a statement, she made a statement on the record. The judge decided to enter her statement into the record by acknowledging her statement. But here's the problem that you have with it becoming an appellate issue. For it to be an appellate issue, and brother, listen, I'm a first year law student, so I'm not an attorney, but I know a little bit. To make it an appellate issue, it must in fact be part of the trial and one of the grounds for an appeal. Having a congresswoman who has what is considered to be full immunity from comment. Literally a congresswoman can say or congressperson can say whatever they want to say and they have full immunity from comment. Because of that, 
There is no way it can endanger the case that judge was just doing a political move and by even mentioning it, period. But what else do you have that well, they did wrong that will cause this case to be overturned? And brother, do you believe Chauvin committed murder or not? Well, That's the let, real question. Let's talk about a few things here. Well, it's not necessarily just the payout, right? Somebody paying somebody's not. It's the tainting of the jury pool. So when you have a tainting of the jury pool, <laughs> what? When, when you have, like, for instance, if you go to trial, and uh -huh. you're selecting jurors, they're uh -huh. claiming that they never heard of the case, they're impartial and, and, and unbiased. When you pay a family out the biggest settlement in American history, jurors will be influenced by that decision. There is at least one or two jurors that wow. have already been caught um, being favorable wow. towards. So, brother, let me go George back to Floyd. this. I don't have These unlimited time. These things are going to come up this, in the this appeal This doesn't court. make sense to me, brother. Did the black man get killed or not? Was he murdered by well, Chauvin or not? Well, let's 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 talk about this. I believe that he was killed by. Chauvin, I believe also that- Was he murdered by Chauvin his, or not, brother? I just, like, I don't understand why I can't complete my sentence. Brother, I think that Chauvin killed- you're playing killed, politics on my show and I don't like that. Was he murdered I, by Chauvin? I believe Chauvin? that Chauvin killed George we know he, Floyd. We I also know believe, Chauvin is the reason he's dead, but murder and is, homicide no, are two different things. I think was one of the reasons that George Floyd is dead. I also think fentanyl and methamphetamine in the system at fatal levels also contributed to his death. My, my, my. Is that is so that not is, is that not a reasonable conclusion brother, that both no, causes? No, it's not according. No, it's not according to not only what we saw on video, but also what medical experts testified to, and what a jury decided. They are the fact finders the of the case. Jury didn't decide. The, fact, the, and, yeah, the jury didn't and, decide that methamphetamine brother, and fentanyl brother, wasn't a cause. And the fact. Hold on, wait a minute, brother. Okay. And the fact that the judge did not set aside the verdict in that state. The judge has the authority to set aside a verdict if they believe that the verdict was in bad faith or the jury did not consider the evidence properly. This is how the justice system works. But no, you 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 are, you are conflating two things. It's they decided they decided that Chauvin was responsible for his death, which is why Chauvin went to jail. But that's you don't not think that's not eliminating he's responsible for the death of George That's George not Paul. eliminating other situations or other circumstances that contributed to his death. That's all I'm saying. Can I ask you this question? Let, yes, let me give you an example. Let's say I'm I'm driving down the street, right? And I have asthma, okay? And a police officer decides to violate my constitutional rights by choking me against the law and against policy. And he chokes me and I die. I die because he's choking me and I have asthma. He's violating the law. And his negligence and aggression causes me to die. Are you saying the cop should not be held as responsible for my death no. because I had a condition of asthma? No, Here, here's the thing. I think that you gave a completely different scenario than what happened, but the police is 100% responsible. Now, if you ingested a, a, you know, a fistful of cocaine and the officer uh, that was the violated brother. your he he you, he you had do, a speed you ball. Realize, you, you know what a speed ball you, is, you right? Realize no, Fentanyl that's not what the and evidence methamphetamine is and a I, speed I really need you fatal. to go back and look at the case because I never said that Chauvin was not brothers, guilty. The I'm, medical I'm just experts, only telling you that two things contributed to George Floyd's death. But the medical expert says it was not a lethal amount of that in his system. It wasn't lethal. Okay, why do you the keep saying? The prosecution said why do you lie, that it why was. Lying on the the defense said that it was. A reasonable person would believe that it. That it can cause you to die if you ingest fentanyl and methamphetamine in a speed this, this is just really interesting. I, I, brother, I thought you would do your homework a little better than this, but I do <laughs> encourage you to go back and actually read the case transcript. I, I watched the whole trial. Online. Okay. I watched the whole trial. All right. And well, I'm a, well I'm great, a but you obviously and been, didn't get it. You didn't understand. Law. Because even in this, you have a problem with the family getting paid out. Now, have you ever had a problem with the white family getting paid out by one of these cities? Give, give me a scenario where I had a problem where I didn't have but a problem. But I'm just asking. I, you you have a problem with this family being paid out a wrongful death? No, I didn't. You just said it tainted the jury pool. Well, you don't pay them out before the guy is guilty. That's all I'm saying. If, if he was wrong, <laughs> wait a minute. So you're telling me that civil justice must civil justice must be withheld until criminal justice takes place? You don't want to interfere. That, you don't want to interfere with the criminal with the criminal side of it. So but you don't not, not make decisions side, that can interfere different. with the jury pool. Therefore, the case gets thrown out.
It's different, brother. It's a civil process. It, listen, it can taint a jury pool. No, if you pay out no, the family. it can't. It doesn't, and it did not. Okay. I mean, that's okay. your opinion, but we'll let see. Me, let it. me move on to something else you said. Um, and uh, and let me talk briefly about some of the stats in relationship to policing uh, and uh, black and brown bodies, all right? Black Americans are 3.23 times more likely than white Americans to be killed by police according to a new study. Uh, this comes out of Harvard. Uh, the researchers examined uh, well over 5,000 police related deaths in the US. Uh, rates of deadly police encounters were higher in West and South than in the Midwest and Northeast. Uh, and they also found that uh, black and brown individuals were searched at a rate of three to seven times more than whites. However, whites were more likely to have illegal contraband on their person. See, here's a, look, look at your face. The reason why you reject that, even though you haven't even been curious about the data, the reason why you automatically reject that in your body language is because you have been indoctrinated to believe something that's not true. So you, so you, so you can read my mind. Is that Brother, I can read your damn body language. Come on, you, man. My mind is saying that. Okay. Well, I'm, a, I'm gonna let you finish, and then I want to comment on that. Yeah, absolutely. 28% uh, of all persons stopped by the Los Angeles police during the last six months of 2018 were black. While black people account for just 9% of the city's population. In San Francisco, the black population has shrunk uh, over the decades to about 5% of the city's total population. But 26% of all stops carried out by that police department were of black people, marking the widest racial disparity in police stops of the eight reporting agencies. And once again, when they crunched the data, whites were more likely to have contraband in their vehicles than blacks based on their stop record. This is their own data. I'm so not taking this data from some far out uh, group that has an agenda. This is from their own policing data, which sparked them to change internal policies. So you well, still don't believe there's racism well, in policing? No, I mean, you, you didn't, you didn't, and not one time did you. Uh, speak directly to the fact of that being racist versus it being something that affects black people disproportionately. Disproportionality wait, wait, don't something, necessarily. Okay, let me finish, wait, wait, brother. Wait, wait, wait. Let me if finish, brother. Just affects black let people disproportionately. Finish. Disproportionality doesn't it? necessarily mean racism. Well, let me what explain. Let, let me explain. So there's a lot of context here to violent crimes in association with police encounters. Here's an example. Black people in America, which make up a very small percentage of Americans, and the violent black people make up an even smaller percentage of black people. So about one, two percent of black people in this country commit over half of violent crimes in this country, and almost half of all the murders are committed by this small That's portion incorrect. of black people in America. That is incorrect. This is this is FBI statistics that no, you no, can let look me, it up. Let me tell let you what you want. That. But brother, you want I got to correct. Come on, man. When you talk about black, let, let me finish and then you correct oh, me. Well, I will correct it now and then let you finish. Okay. You, you, uh, when, you're when interrupting you say, my argument. Yeah, to try but to you're, you're, make, you're making the wrong argument and you made a classic mistake. The rate that you're looking for is homicide. So you have black folks at 13.8% of the population are connected to roughly 50 to 51% of homicides in America. Now homicides in the data, they do not distinguish between murders and self defense. It only says homicide. Second, brother, second brother. hold on brother, second, okay. you said violent crimes. That is patently false, they do not make up 50% or more of all of the violent crimes in the United States of America. And here's something else you should research. Whites are more likely to commit crimes against children. Whites are more likely to commit crimes against coworkers. Whites are more likely to commit crimes against individuals who are inside of their families. Now, that is also from FBI.gov. But are you using that as a pretext? You, are you using that as a pretext to follow all white people and think that they are child molesters you, who are about to commit a crime against you? You're trying, to, you're, trying to put, you're trying to put words in my mouth. All I said was I, you, you, you at least admitted to the violent crimes and also the murder brother, rate, I'm homicide. A these, these FBI, and let that me has finish, a brother. social context as well, but I will explain after you finish. The FBI statistics are on conviction rates. The, the FBI no, homicide not. statistics. No, it oh, is not, brother. You, you need okay, to read you, damn People stats. can go the out FBI and do the research. Not based on conviction people rates, People can go out and do the research for themselves. They sure the can. The research that I've seen, not being the, honest homicide, the homicide rates, you could call it the murder or homicide rates, depending on how you want to frame it, are convictions. So over no, half, 
Can you let me finish? Almost half sure, of can. all the murders that occur are occurring by less than 13% of the population. Because 13% is all black people. Half of those black people are males. Most of the, most is males between the ages of 16 and 35. And so that's even a smaller portion. So when you have two or one percent of the American population, even close to half of the murders and, and over half of violent crimes in this country, that will necessitate more of a police response. Now, if okay. you're sitting here telling me, and you've never been a police officer before, you're telling me that Hell police no. officers, let me, let me finish, that police officers are sitting here letting white people just commit crimes running rampant. Just because they're white, they're willing to turn a blind eye to sexual assault, to them robbing and murdering people. I mean, brother, that's that's you're, you're far-fetched in that approach. All right, let me respond. Look at police encounters, and you have to look at the reason why police are encountering black people. That's okay. the reason why they're disproportionately arrested. That's okay. why black people are incarcerated. All right, I gotta wrap it up, brother. My producers are giving me the wrap up time, but I want you to remember uh, that first of all, the violent crime ratio was always clumped into this homicide ratio. It simply does not fit. Here's another study I want you to examine when you get an opportunity, because you kind of hit on it in your discussion. Uh, there's a bigger causal link between poverty and violent crime. Which is not and, racism. And, and and wait a minute, brother, let me let me finish the point because I'm going somewhere with it. 98%, that's the number you should remember. 98% of the violent crimes and homicides occur with people who are under the poverty line or right at the poverty line. I agree. 98%, which tells us that it's actually the deprivation, the deprivation of a lack of economy. That is a more causal link than race. So are we saying that cops should now target poor people? Because 98% no. of these crimes are committed by individuals who are below the poverty rate. Okay. And how dare you justify a cop targeting a black person who has done nothing illegal because <laughs> Black people are higher in a crime statistic in one arena. I can point to eight arenas where white people are higher in a crime Brother. statistic, where poor people are higher in a crime statistic. And also the vast majority of all crime in America is committed by men who are 28 years of age and well, under. Let so me, should they now go out and racially or excuse me, gender profile all men 28 me years talk, of age me, and under? Let me speak on this issue. It's not the fact that cops are out here targeting these people, it's the fact when you're poor, you're more likely to commit these crimes. You're more likely to be but on drugs. You're more likely to fall in that category. Black that people. would necessitate police response. No, the why target people, black people? Why get behind no, the it's poor not the about they targeting have no black people. Why do that? You and I both know as two black men in America, it's not about targeting black people. There's yes, an is. issue with culture as well. I grew up in the hood and dudes in the hood, with gang activity, drug dealing is increasingly more violent than people in the trailer That's park. That's a justification From my personal for racial experience. profiling. You said what? That's a justification for racial profiling. No, I don't, I don't think it's never just a profile. profile. However, if you have a crime a area where people are poor, less educated, more crime is committed there. Police don't go out and most of policing is not proactive. It's response to things that go on in the community. I right. never, I've never, I never go out and. Find people who yeah, are brother. People. Listen, I, it, it's respond. been real. I, I'm getting the rap uh, signal, man. I wish I had more time. It's a show with limited time, obviously. But I appreciate you joining me on Indisputable. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thank you.